Oh man, my hair looks like shit. Welcome back. Chapter 8. It seems that flogging makes your dick stand up, said Miss Arbiter as I stood naked and ashamed. Or perhaps she can't stand up any other way. At any rate, you look like an animal, and the stable is the place for animals. She flicked her whip quite gently so that it curled around my balls, placing me under arrest in a sort of lasso. Then she ordered me to crouch on all fours and jerked the whip, obliging me to follow her. Suddenly, she flew to the door, tugging my balls quite painfully, so that I moaned. In a swift motion, she unlocked it and pounced on the kneeling figure outside. It was the servant, Denton. He had been spying through the keyhole, and with a snarl, Miss Arbiter caught him by the earlobe, his penis was exposed, and I saw that his own erection was as proud as mine. Miss Arbiter heaped scornful insult upon the shamefaced wretch, wretch, <clears throat> and told him that he evidently had not been taught a proper lesson. Miss Mantle clucked that he had brought disgrace to her house, and Miss Arbiter had her authority to chastise the boy as severely as she pleased. Thus, we formed a cortege, myself hobbling as best I could behind Miss Arbiter, Denton loping in pain as his ear was pulled, and the ladies murmuring behind us, their clothing in varied states of disarray. Only Bernice and Miss Arbiter remained, retained full nudity, and Bernice drew Miss Florence along with a finger crooked in her in the gusset of her satin corslet. We arrived at an empty stable like a barn, and with a various rural accoutrements which Miss Arbiter said would serve our purposes amply. She handed her whip to Miss Bernice, who amused herself by flicking it idly, sending little tremors through my tethered manhood. Miss Arbiter ordered Denton to extend his arms. He did so with a faltering erection. Faltering erection. That's a first. It may very well be the last. Everyone's, everyone's erection is rampant at all times in this novel. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, God. I have the coronavirus. He did so with a, yeah, a faltering erection, and Miss Arbiter slapped a length of heavy chain around his wrist. Then she fastened the chain through a pulley in the ceiling and with powerful muscles pulled the male up until his toes only brushed the ground. He was whimpering and groaned aloud as Miss Arbiter ripped the shirt from his back and pulled down his trousers to sag around his ankles, his shame causing much laughter. I thought he was already naked. But then again, my last video was recorded almost a year ago, so, you know, I might not remember. He was bare and hovering on painful tiptoe, and his penis had gone quite soft, dangling like a big cucumber on his downy thighs. Miss Arbiter laughed and said he should be punished for his spying, and if he were and if he was to dangle like a boy, then he should be punished as one. What do you think the punishment should be, miss? she said to me. I stammered that it was not my position to say. 
At a public school, prefects would cane boys for spying on the bare buttocks, said Miss Norringe suddenly. Her pretty face gleamed with cruel desire. The Italian miss is no boy but an animal, said Miss Arbiter, and I dare say the stable lad has never been to school. Perhaps it is time for some, after we break this animal and turn her into a man. Miss Arbiter bound four heavy horseshoes <laughs> to my hands and feet, forcing me to hobble clumsily. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Pardon me. <clears throat> then she found an old husk of corn cob. <laughs> Stretched my buttocks apart with the fingers of one hand and brutally thrust it deep into my anus. <clears throat> making me squeal and wriggle in distress. Everyone laughed, and she ordered me to hold my bum plug inside me. She retrieved her whip and uncoiled it from my balls, then amused us all by lashing my buttocks fiercely and sending me hobbling in a circle around the trembling body of my fellow miscreant. This degradation kept my penis hard. And Miss Arbiter sneered, but I sensed that none of the ladies was displeased. <clears throat> he makes a fine pony, said Dido, so why don't we harness him properly and race him? <laughs> I felt a heavy harness strapped on my back. My mouth was filled with a gagging bit and bridle, and blinkers were flattened right over my eyes, so that I was blindfolded. My bridle was attached to reins, and now I felt them tug, urging me to hobble forward, the corn cob in my bum hurt abominably, but I obeyed the command. <sighs> Stay, boy, cried Miss Arbiter. We shall race him. Mrs. Dark, please go first. I felt Dido's dress brush my thighs as she mounted me. Then her naked quim fastened around my neck. She was surprisingly heavy, and I sagged somewhat until a flurry of strokes from the riding crop lashed my bare bum and made me whinny, just like a real pony. <clears throat> so I have a couple of things here. Dido, I don't believe, was ever at any point wearing a dress. We saw mere paragraphs ago that Bernice was fingering the gusset of her corset, and now she's wearing a dress, and the gusset of her corset is suddenly gone, and her naked quim is rubbing against our dear protagonist. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters. <clears throat> Dido's fount was oily wet. <sighs> she cried, giddy up, plying my bum with frequent crop strokes as I hobbled as fast as I could to carry her round in a circle. Why, a sheep could go faster, said Miss Arbiter scornfully. Dido's Perfumed thighs and bum were replaced by a different lady, whom I imagined to be Mrs. Mantle from her odor. She whipped me most fiercely, and I raced around the barn quite furiously to escape the dreadful burning strokes to my bear. 
panting and sobbing. I heard the ladies clamor to race me, and one by one they mounted and whipped me on until I was a lathered in my own sweat, and the copious fluids from the naked founts that slithered on my back. I gasped at the sudden weight of not one, but two bodies. <sighs> we'll find out who the other bodies were in the next paragraph.